JC, what do you think of uh, uh, revel revelational epistemology? Uh, what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> well, from my perspective, I look to the two six books of the Bible as uh, the, my epistemological starting point, God's revelation. Um, and that's also in tandem with general revelation is creation all around us as well. So revelation on a uh, twofold matter. General revelation, <clears throat> Wait. Special revelation. Why do you believe why do you believe the that the Bible is um accurate and not just like all made up or false? Uh, because it's not ontologically parallel to every other book in creation other than Wait, merely what? writing Wait, uh, what words on a page. It's not no, because it's not parallel to any other book. So basically, the Bible is Hold not on, parallel Yuri. to any. Hey. Yuri, take sorry care. about that. That's mine. Sorry about yeah. that. What you do by the by the very nature of the question assumes all books are just the same, which is just a hasty generalization fallacy, and you shouldn't make it. You know the particulars of different books and things like that, and how you know sequentially it, it, it you know, came about, the Bible is absolutely uh, unique on that in totality. I'm not saying it's, you no, know, it doesn't share similarities where, oh, you wrote certain uh, things on a uh, piece of parchment or paper or papyri, you, you know, use a writing instrument to write things down. Oh, all books have that in common. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> you know, have certain streams of commonality there, but that's where it's kind of like uh, you have to start making the proper distinctions there. Otherwise, you're just making a hasty generalization fallacy saying, ontologically, all books are just really the same, you know. Um, they're all, uh, you know, everything's either just fiction or other things. Oh, whoa, you got truth and fiction, don't you, in book, okay? So you will end up making the proper distinctions. I think you're just being a little hasty there. So go ahead. What if my position is that the Bible says some things that are true and some things that are false? I agree with you. The Bible, the, the, the Bible actually records when Satan lied to Eve and Genesis. Yeah, but what if I, what if it's, I think the resurrection didn't happen? That's your belief. You just go against right. what scripture says. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, so why what does a what does um revelatory epistemology um have how does it I don't understand I understand the view that it could be different. I agree the Bible is different than other books. Okay. I don't know if it's different in kind, but what I want to know is why you trust the Bible, and so far the answer is because it's different than other books. No, no, um, that's too. That's a second question. You kind of asked both originally, but the first question needs to be addressed. Is a general hasty or hasty generalization fallacy was introduced. So your second question, why do I trust the Bible? It's because it's the honest us, God's word, and uh, I do take that by faith as my ultimate authority in all things, metaphysically, epistemologically, and ethically. It's my ultimate standard uh, for knowing, knowing metaphysically and then also how to live this life. I'm saying anyone that doesn't hold to that consistently is ultimately reduced to uh, absurdity, philosophically speaking, also theologically speaking as well. Um, so the reason that you take the Bible as your final authority is no, it's um, the by faith? It's, it's the ultimate starting point. Which is the ultimate starting point? What does of that mean? Person. It's my because like, you have to have an ultimate starting point, otherwise you don't even get off the ground, philosophically speaking. You have to have yes. a transcendental starting so, point. But why a, why pick that one? I didn't pick them. You just found yourself believing in it one day. Everyone knows God exists. Is what Romans one says. No, no belief that the mm -hmm. Bible is. The final authority. And the Bible says it's the honor thoughts. There's no higher authority than God's word that then judges God's word. God's word is the highest authority. There ain't nothing outside of that that judges it. So you just have always believed that the Bible is the highest authority. He self revealed himself in his word and the creation to all. Yes. So as long as I don't have that, then I'm fine. I'm off the hook. You know that God exists. But we're not talking about whether or not God exists. We're talking about whether the Bible is the ultimate authority. And I certainly don't believe that. If God self-revealed himself, that naturalistically follows. What? Why does that? Re Maybe God revealed himself to me and said there, that the Bible is false. The Bible refutes that assertion. Wow. The if Bible said, is wrong, though. 
it's just it's, it's just like a holy book like the bible an imposter to pretend yeah. like it you can imagine up whatever you want. That's just going to be a form of suppressing the truth, which Romans 1, 18 to 20 is into. We'll suppress the truth of the true knowledge of God that they do have. It says literally in the Greek, knowing the God, definite article, this God, the Bible reveals to us, this uh, self-revealed uh, word tells us that he's made it manifest in them and also external to them, via the external creation around them and also being them the image bearers of God himself. He's made it manifest in them. So you have innate knowledge and external knowledge to themselves as well. Yeah, but if I'm trying to figure out if the Bible is the ultimate authority or if it should be, why would I be interested if the Bible well, says that it is? Your question's flawed to begin with because the Bible doesn't give you the right to stand outside of it and judge whether or not it's true or not. But I'm not interested if the Bible gives me the right to No, you're to just asking it. me from my perspective. I'm staying on my side of the page. You stay on your side of the page. So there's no there's no reasons that you can give me to believe in the Bible? Other than the Bible says it, which you well, just admitted. Would, no, just would, lay out your philosophy to me. If you don't hold to a theology, you're going to hold to something philosophically, nature of reality, nature of uh, knowledge and how you obtain knowledge. And you should look. Well, so, but just so we're clear, there's nothing about, the, you're not gonna, about you're what you said. See you're not going to see it unless... You self-destruct on your own grounds, and then you gotta go. Oh, I need something different. What? So you're not gonna what, see it. What's self-destructive about it? Well, you haven't said anything about your worldview yet. You're still waiting for something philosophically grounded. Well, I talked to God, and I, God told me that the that the Christian uh, Bible is false. I'm asking you, what's your nature of reality? I just told you. So God exists in your reality. Yeah. Because you're not an atheist. Correct. Okay. And what else exists? Uh, well, God told God told me that the world. That, yeah, exactly. You did okay. Are you deist or are you theist? Theist. He talks to me. You're a theist. A theist. Yeah, I think. I mean, if that's what it means when he talks to me. Okay. And how do you know about him? Uh, he talks to me. <laughs> yeah why well, should i believe you're subjective well i mean uh this is this is just you're on the well, other side right and you, you this is my you. side I'm not, I'm not making myself the i'm saying the bible is for you god's self-attesting authority yeah. my god that's is the authority, the authority. How's he's that my authority how does that make your subjective experience the authority then because that's what your god saying. does it the creator the creator of the universe does it this isn't my subjective authority. This is, this is the Creator God. So you have to appeal to the Creator God. So you could debate all these other guys and reject that. That's right. Exactly. And God told me that the Christian Bible is false. It's demonic. That's just it. That's all. That's that's the that's, yeah. That's, that's the all, that's, all. that's the revealed truth. No, he, he gives me other things too. He tells me like evolution happened, right? Tells me that gay marriage is okay. He tells me all kinds of things. Yeah, really. <laughs> Drew, please don't laugh at JHC's police. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you just have a subjective revelation, not objective. What does that mean? It's just your subjective opinion. No, it's not my subjective opinion. This is just the reveal. This is the revealed knowledge of God. Which is just your subjective experience. Is is your belief in the Bible as ultimate authority well, just a subjective reveal, opinion? Didn't reveal that to me. He didn't. He didn't reveal it to you. No, just your own subjective opinion. Wait, I'm sorry. Do you? This so we have a battle of. We have a battle. Bible, dude. It's not in parallel. You're trying to. What's make it. What's the difference? It should be obvious to you. Well, it's obviously not. Can you explain it? I have the objective word of God. You don't. You just have. I, didn't I say, have the objective just, word of God. I just made up that you know uh, God just spoke to me right now, and He told me your worldview is false. Now, what do you what do you say? Well, I, I talked to my God, and He said well, your worldview uh, is false. Now, okay. Now we need some objective standard against our subjective assertions here. Okay. What's the mediator here? What's going to be the mediating um, device we use here? I mean, there can't be any. How do you know? 
Well, how do we know who's right and who's wrong? How do you know? Now you're just in a shouting match. We're just in two sides of the page going, God said this to me, God said this to me. Which one's right? right? How do you so know? You're, so the best argument that you can muster for me is that is to Not we're both in, Bible. Is we're both the Bible? in a shouting match. Or, no, I went to your grounds and said, oh, I can just do the same thing you just did arbitrarily. But that's not what I appealed to, first of all. You just said, oh, I reject that. So I'm just going to make a subjective claim. I go, you oh, say, I'll play that game. I'll no, make you say that the too. Bible. Yeah, how do you like it? How do you resolve the issue then? How, you, you say know? the Bible is the written word of God. Yes, and yes. I say that I have the spoken word of God. They're the exact same thing. What's the difference? Do no, you want me to write? Way. Do you want me to no, write it down in notepad not, and read it off to you, and then it'll not, be the they're, same? They're, I can do not, that. No, they're, they wouldn't be the same thing because you're going to try and make that ontologically parallel to you just writing mm-hmm. down on a piece of paper. To God is no. Bible over God time. is. Are you kidding God, me? God is. He is inspiring so me to write these words. Verse uh, one. You can do the that all Christian you like. Christian Bible yeah, you put is it on false. Paper. I said, "There's where your commonality is." Oh, look, words on a page. Yeah, we both agree. Okay. Now, now what? Now I have a Bible. There's one that, verse. The Christian is Bible is false. Is that, is that parallel to the Bible? Really? You're going to make that absurd? Uh, I'm inspired by God. He's directing my hand. That's an appeal to the stone fallacy. What? Saying it's absurd without demonstrating it's absurd. I'm just saying, are you trying to make that a parallel? Yeah, you said that How, absurdity. What, what's yeah, the relevant... What's the relevant... The stone fallacy. parallel doesn't exist it's absurd yeah that's Other an appeal to the only... stone fallacy <clears throat> you have I a demonstration of why it's absurd you want to you make that ontologically history yeah historically valid and parallel to the bible dude um you have no reason to believe is that, that how the bible was compiled like i mean you have no reason to believe your senses about the length of history and how the bible is put together without borrowing from my worldview no, you just said I just write words on a page. I I admitted I said the only no, I did not. Between, I said God inspired I, me to write dude, these words on dude, a page. Calm down. I I I just said okay, okay, fine. So what? You're gonna make that ontologically parallel to the Bible and historically? What? Yeah, it is. It's the exact same thing. No, it ain't. What's the difference? Oh, yours is actually better because yours is true. <clears throat> oh. A lot bigger than yours too. Ooh. Yeah, uh, bigger well, doesn't you know, ignore the pun, man. No, I'm just saying it's not ontologically parallel, historically wise, or anything. You Why not? Draw on I don't understand what the interesting difference is. Because you just wrote it on a page now. No, God directed my hand. Why are you strawmanning my position? I just said you just wrote it now. Okay. God inspired is me that, to write this. Is, is the Bible being written Here, right now? My is Bible. My yeah. Is the Bible being written right now? As long as you make that clear distinction, you, your argument falters here because you're going to go, no, it's not the same. Like, okay, you just showing yourself to be a fool here. Just the name of it. my Bible is called untitled.txt. Yeah. I don't care what you call it. I don't care what you There's call it. There's three verses in it. Are you writing it now? Okay, is the Bible, was the, is the Bible being I'm written? not writing it. God's writing it. Is the Bible being oh. written now? Yeah, on is... your side of the page, the Bible, you're, you're writing your uh, thing down. Is that same as my side of the page? No. Yes, it's the exact no. same scenario. Is the is my Bible being written right now? Who no. wrote your Bible? God through men. Oh, there you go. If you're just talking about inspiration, I just said historically, is it parallel? Are you just saying is your Bible older than mine? Is that what you're saying? Where's the distinction? So close. Isn't there a distinction here? You I'm, asking you, right? I'm asking you. I'm asking you if the only I'll just distinction. Ask you to say, give me a yes or no. Just say yes or no to this. Your Bible is older than mine. Yes. It, okay, so they weren't written at the same time, right? C- correct. Clearly. Oh, bravo! Thank you very much. Okay. What is that? How we got past anything? that? Because it, it, you're trying to make this absolute parallel here, and the moment you derive a distinction between them, then they're not the same. I never said that our Bibles are identical. They also have different. No, they also have different words in them. Trying to make them the same or identical. Mm -hmm. Trying to use similar argumentation. Well, then what's your point? Yeah, I'm going to say it. You're trying to make it as similar. There's really no difference between what you're doing here to the Bible. That's what you're trying to say. 
And I go, that TXT is much better than your Bible. You much easier to, the entire, to read. <clears throat> make two, Matt, you're straw manning again. <clears throat> no, I'm pointing out something he doesn't want to point out. That it falters his argument and makes it what? fallacious. What? The moment he derives no, a he... distinction between them, then they aren't identical. In any I don't, they're identical. Why would I say they're identical? So what are you trying to argue for? They're not identical. There you go. What's your <laughs> argument then? Oh, what a fucking meme, dude. Quit trying to parallel your writing on a page right now, saying you're inspired, to I'm going to make the same argument. I can make the same Bible. So what are you trying to do? You realize he's, not, I, he's you never claim, said they're identical. Claim that now. It's not the same. You it said. Big Chum, what is this? You distinction. You got to go, oh, there's a difference. Okay. Just historically wise, right? Do you guys mind? Hold on. Do you guys mind letting like JT and Matt go through this? Because I've heard everyone in here argue with Matt before. I haven't heard JHC. Argue. No, these are my, I'm appointing disciples. You are my disciples. Spread the word of Untitled that TXT, please. So can we burn? Can we print out uh, JHC's Bible and burn it? <laughs> yeah, if we're gonna go straight to straight to hell. So quality to fucking hell. Uh, what were you okay. about to say, JHC? Were you? Did you stop cursing because your God wouldn't would be upset at you? God doesn't care about that. I don't. I don't want to upset Matt Yester's sensibilities by swearing <laughs> if I don't have to. What? what? I can't <laughs> hear it. Too many people talking. What? Can you pass the starkiness here? Just answer the questions <laughs> and let's go back and forth. These, so you, so your your, doc, your document is different uh, than uh, my document. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's the nature of your God? <laughs> um, well, he's all-knowing. He's omniscient. You're going to ape Christianity, You're going to ape Christianity? Wait, so you're gonna... what are you talking about? You're going to ape Christianity, right? You're just going to ape it. It's Christianity. You're talking about no. ape it. You said no. not the Christian God, These are right? attributes of many, many God's. I love it, did it? No, I didn't take this from the Christian God, if that's your question. Hey, JHC, remember, there were distinctions you made. Like, your your God told you that evolution's cool, homosexuality's awesome. What else did he tell you? It's clearly that not the Christian, the Christian Bible is false. Yeah. And right. the Christian God is, and the Christian Bible is The Christian false. Bible is false. Mm -hmm. Oh, that doesn't so sound it's like Christian. All right. Is your God one person? Is he one person? Yes. Yeah. Unitarian, right? Okay, now you're back to the original issue. I was pressing these other guys on. How do you account for universals in particular? Then I don't know. Unitarian. What are you talking about? You study philosophy at all? Yeah. <laughs> you know what universal is? You know what particular is? Yes. So why'd you ask me? Because you said, "How do you deal with the problem?" As if that's supposed to implant some argument in my head. No, I just said, "Well, the." The thing we were discussing here was the issue of universal particulars. How do you get that from Unitarian God? Their th what are you talking about? Their thoughts in the mind of God. Universals, universals are concepts in the mind of God. Maybe you've heard of this view that Christians stole from mine called Christian conceptualism. Are you familiar with it? I know what conceptualism is. Right. So divine but conceptualism is true. You're not answering the question i said how did you get the particulars he created particulars i'm asking how can a unitarian god do that when he's not unified how can he world? create those things in the same realm yes how can it's he incredible. create those things in the same realm mm -hmm. is that the how question two universals unchanging then particulars same realm if he's not ultimately unified and diverse what do you talk? I don't know what you're saying. So if God wants a rock, he creates a rock. If he wants to create two rocks, he creates two rocks. Why are there two instead of three if he's created two? Because two is a concept in the mind of God. How do you have unity and diversity in the same realm? I just explained it. I don't, I don't understand the problem. I'm just, just listen to my thoughts. If the ground of all being is not both, unified and diverse so i don't know what you're talking about the trinity the christian perspective your god is not a trinity you why would no yeah the trinity is in 
the the trinity is incoherent that's not but i don't understand but regardless i have no idea what you're asking me no, your claim that the trinity is incoherent is a false claim he's unified and diverse from his thoughts yeah he's got more than one thought if that's what you're asking being, he's diverse in his persons that's why i ask you if your god is one person yeah he's one person not account for he's why no, does he, no split he, personality here well you just can't account for the for the many why uh, does he have the many, a unified and diverse in yeah, person many and not in his thoughts the many what particulars in our experience he creates them but you're not giving me a grounding ontologically of how he speaks say, he speaks them into existence i'm not talking about ex nihilo or anything okay just on the one and many issue mm -hmm. you don't have the ground of all being being both unified and diverse and reflected in his creation that's how it's reflected in his creation like a mirror that we see aspects of his being reflected in his creation. Yeah. There's two rocks. He has the number two as a divine concept. I don't see the problem. Let's pull this down a little bit further. Maybe do an understandable concept here because it's going to go over your head. Love. Is your God loving? Yeah. Is your God eternal? Yes. Love is other centered, correct? No. And what's your definition of love? I don't know, something like uh compassion. To who? To yourself. Self love? Yes. That's the definition of love. It's it's part of it, yeah. I'm asking what okay. Give me the coherent uh, the fullness then. If it's just part of it, then I want the whole package. What is it? Um, uh, something is loved in case it's the object of attachment, devotion, or admiration. Is that like thought thinking itself or something like that? Like love loving itself? And it's like a God loving himself because is, is he's God so love bad. Or is God love or is there some absolute outside of your God? Yeah, God, then. God loves. If that's what you're asking, I don't know. What it means to so say, he, is he love? Oh, you know, then where's this derivative property from himself? Yeah, it's just a der der derivative property that then is applied to himself. It's just circular, right? Yeah, it's a divine concept. So, so is that how is that not tautological? What? It's Why is the statement God loves himself? Why is that tautological? If he is love, right? No, I'm not saying he I don't know what that well, means. Is love distinct from him? Love is a concept, a divine concept. Is it, is it distinct from him that he has to apprehend this from somewhere? Ether or something. It's not derivative no. from him. No, it's a concept. So it's within him. Yeah. He is love. He has the concept the of love. He love himself. So mm -hmm. love, love, here's what it boils down to. Love loves love no i mean look if i have the concept of a fire hydrant does that mean i am fire hydrant talking about your eternal god okay. and i just said if you're going to throw the attribute of love on the hill he has mm -hmm. an attribute as derivative no. of him and he performs the action that then is self-referential you have and if it defines him as one of his attributes then you have love loving love yeah fire hydrant fire hydranting fire hydrant how's that not tautological well it just doesn't follow i'm not what identifying is, what god is, is, is i'm love, not identifying loving, god loving. as love i'm not saying god no, okay. is literally love not, he is the he, concept of love if, and he expresses if he, love if he is not because it's part of his nature and character in essence right no hold on i didn't oh, say those words it's a divine i'm, I'm concept. asking the question Okay, is this concept derived outside of him? No. How is he apprehended? Why would he apprehend something that's not outside of him? If it's part of him, then you have love, loving love. Okay? No, it's just a concept. It, it no, it no more means God, it's love, loving love, it, than it, him having it, the it, divine concept it, of two it, means it, two, it, two, it, two, it, two. Is the concept just nonsense. 
derivative of his nature and character and essence. I don't know what that means. He's got the idea of love, and he happens to love himself as well. So he just has this idea yes. that's not uh, from him. Where's it from? What does that talk? What do you mean? Why wouldn't it be from him? I've said or, it's from him. If, if it is, now you're back to the same issue. How is this even an issue? Look, if all you mean by love, loving love means he has this concept that he applies to himself, then if that's all you mean by love, loving love, then fine. And it's not an issue. Okay, for you're me. stuck in the tautology. Yeah. Well, yes, the problem is you got the wrong definition of love to start with. That's why you end up in this conundrum. No. That's, that's not the wrong definition love. of love. Yeah, My definition is. of love comes from comes from no. the creator of the universe. Your definition is wrong. No, because the you have to borrow from my worldview. No, the Bible borrows from my worldview, and it gets this I'm one wrong. Borrowing, I'm not borrowing from yours because it's got a completely different definition than that. Love no. is other centered. Verse one no. of my Bible is the Christian Bible is Bible. false. Bible is, yeah, I know you keep making that claim. That's side issue here. I'm saying God makes the claim. No, I don't. No. You said I'm borrowing from your worldview. I'm not because I got a completely different view of love than you do. It's completely I ain't borrowing yours. It's other centered. That's the biblical definition of love. If you don't have the ontological trinity and eternal fellowship and love and harmony with each other, you don't have the concept of love. Period. So why you why don't God I have the concept of God? For why can't I don't have the concept, concept of, love? of love? He has it. False, right you have a false definition of love. You have it's the wrong definition false. of it. Yes, you do. Why is it false? I don't understand. You have like a weird view where God, if God... Um, it's an incoherent uh, concept here because you, you, there's no um, explanation given beyond love, loving love. I don't know what that... Hey, God loves himself. Means. You have to have self-love. He's basically a divine Oprah. I don't understand what the issue is. God loves himself. What does it mean to love yourself? Um, he's got a lot of confidence in himself. He really likes Wait, the kind of person means, that love he means is. confidence now? I'm giving you the different... No, love I didn't means, say... Love means with faith or con, confide? What? What are, you, what are you saying? I don't know. How are you define the term love? I'm gonna write down God has a warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion towards himself. He is, an, he is an object of affection. How can he attach himself to himself? He is himself. That's the wrong kind of attachment. Then you gotta be very explicit on how you're using these terms. Then, so I can't. He's very amorous about himself. He admires the sort of being that he is. He's really happy the way that things are turning out. He wouldn't change anything about things, himself. Things turn out to him. Your God. Things turn out. What's turning out to him? He's eternal. Is there some issue with this so far? I don't understand what the. Uh, is. You're trying to be cute and dance around this stuff here and then trying to add no the point no the point is that yeah. it's really easy for me to spin up an infinity uh number of examples that handle things like logic and the universe and whatever just as well as the christian religion would so yeah, you have no reason for it. preferring you have no reason to prefer the christian bible over untitled.txt you just got a completely different worldview that's all you're stating you guys got this yeah. uh, Unitarian and it works, God. And it works just as well as yours. Works what? I haven't heard anything working yet. I heard... Uh, well, in church. my Bible, I don't have to fight against things like evolution. It's awesome. So is that your issue? Oh, okay. So that now we get to the nuts and bolts here, right? Why didn't you make that your first assertion? No. Now, hold on. That isn't... that. That's a nice side effect. The point is, is that oh, I don't need... I don't need Christianity for anything. Right, it's very easy for me to spin up an alternative that would handle things just as well as the Christian I've Bible you, would. You're just asserting that you haven't demonstrated that. Well, actually, you it's mean it's, it's actually it's your it's well, actually your assertion, right? Your assertion is that without the Christian God or the Christian view. Scripture or the Christian worldview, the X, world. Y, and Z are impossible. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I'm showing you it's not impossible. It's very easy for me to spin up some dumbass document, spray a bunch of garbage in it, and claim yeah, so you're just making this is the limit. Yeah. All you had to do, no, all you were was going, well, okay, it's going to be everything in the same respect here, right. Christianity, except for you're going to deny the ontological trinity, which is a farce, because you can't, you just uh, totally floundered over yourself trying to explain universals and particulars. 
because you just don't have the ground of all being, both being both unified and diverse. And see that reflected in his creation, you just kind of go, well, you can just do this. I go, look, at least I got coherence on my side here of a correlation between the creator and his creation. Those things are going to be reflected in there. You just go, right. well, you turn yeah. God. Yeah. The best you can do is just be uh, uh, just uh, you know, the creator of universals, but you can't ground the particulars in them or the unification of those particulars in his creation. To any universal because there's no relationship between them right. and i got you to admit journey. and i got you to admit that all i had to do was say it's anything. basically like christianity except for x is differently it, and that's and what you as admitted as you, which is awesome as soon as you change something in there you change whole systematic things but you don't have a systematic theology you don't you're gonna go I'm talking about because you didn't lay out a systematic theology I don't need to. Everything that I said just has to be true. Yeah, it's not a system. It's just you got a little piecemeal you want to throw out when you can, but once I press you on a systematic approach. Really? What does Christianity say about how many objects are in my pocket right now? It's not a, that's not that All right, well, a then it's, question. Well, well God then it's, knows what, how many there are. I'm just not privy to that knowledge. Why do I have to answer that? Exactly. One? So I have an answer to everything. Maybe I'm just not privy to all of it either. I didn't say I have an answer to everything. Okay, and neither do I. And my view is just, I have a it does just as fine. On these certain philosophical and theological issues, because you're not, you're not diving in, well, why does man have uh, the, oh, well, they sin against his utilitarian God or whatever, and things like that. Okay, what's the role of redemption then? Now you're going to be in, you're going to be in with the one is Pentecostals and the, um, the Arians here and the, and the Jews asserting the Unitarian God. You have no atonement, no resolution to sin, which you want to introduce anyway. Okay, why does man have the problems in this world that he has? He rebelled against his God. How's atonement made? How's reconciliation made? Is he just like Allah, uh, just arbitrary? Oh, there's another Unitarian God as well, Allah. Just arbitrarily forgets. There's no atonement. Look, nor you no can law. ask me one question I mean, at a time. Gonna, just ask me one. I'll I know I'm saying here, you're so surface level and trying to be cute and trying to deal with you know someone who actually knows the bible yeah, and knows you don't, theology and hold you on don't understand I'm not, I'm not, if you can let me no, go ahead a minute, okay this ad hoc sort of argumentation you're doing piecemeal you want to go up against a systematic theologian here who's going to tear you to shreds because you're going to have to answer worldview and theological issues here since you say you're a theist or just plain one now i'm trying to think oh you're just making it up on the spot anyway just say no he was plain to be a theist now, if you're going to hold to uh, a systematic theology here, you don't have a cogent systematic theology. You don't have no atonement um, or anything like that, reconciliation for um, why man has the problems he has or where the fall actually happened, uh, the resolution to that and the ultimate consummation. Of all Can you ask me one question? Just ask me one question and I'll answer you. Jesus Christ. Just pick one. Saying this is everything you've been dodging here, and you will. Get I haven't dodged shred. anything. You haven't asked me a question. Saying, I'll tell you. Do you want to get into this? Do you are you prepared? Yeah, I'm very prepared. You're just gonna throw out ad hoc Hit stuff. Go do everything I laid out there. What's your resolution? God's you having me pull. Up? God's having me pull up untitled.txt notepad right now, and he says I'm ready. The people are ready for more revelation, so let's give it to them. What's your question? I take a drink here. Um, creation, what? you believe in creation, right? Um, what do you mean by creation? Way too deep. He created, what are you but talking he about evolution. Okay, yep. the universe came in by His will, right? God created the universe. Yes. Okay. Fall. Um. Yeah, let's say there was. Okay. Mode of redemption? Uh, no, we're all fucked. Okay. So you have no resolution to man's problem. What do you mean? You're saying God isn't uh, just to, to consign well, people well, to hell for their sin? I love how you just blatantly assert that as if that has some sort of tag on me. You could have just asked me the question. Do you yeah. think that do you think that God is within his rights to consign people to hell for their sin? Yes. Okay. So there you, you know go. What, Everyone what is fucked. Your uh, going you. going going against the will of God. Which will? What are you talking about? So your God has a decreed will and no prescriptive will? I don't know about? what you're talking about. God doesn't want us to so, sin. Like do I sin. said. Like I'm saying. 
every time you go, I have no idea what you're talking about. It shows you don't even have a systematic approach here. <laughs> you have My guy doesn't have multiple wills. Like I said, if you want to go into this and get ripped to shreds, by all means, you're, you're uh, you know. All you're asking do, me is if some Christian concept applies what to is, my God, and I, obviously I, it doesn't. I, I'm asking you to define your terms, please. If you can't do so. I just did. You said, what is sin? And I told you. And then you said, which you said will? It's the will of God. I go, okay, does he have a decreed will, prescriptive will? No, you said, which will? Yeah, right. which one? Well, he, he only has great, one. Right? Huh? He has, he has, he only one, has one will. Yeah. Really? Okay, which is it? What are, you what, is, what are you talking about? It's God's will. It's his will. What is his will? What is it? What, define it. What is it? Can you define your terms, please? You like throwing out these terms and I ask you to define it. You go, what's the what term? Do you define it? Which term do you need described? God's will. Define God's will. It's what he desires. What does he desire? Like you want an explicit list of all the things? Yep. No, I'm just, asking, I'm just asking for my own. Why don't you ask me in particular with like one question? Does God, does God right. desire X? And I'll tell you. I asked you to define a general term and you get uh, antsy when I ask you to define a general term. And then you go, well, why do I got to be specific? Because you're being too general. General about what? God's will. What is it? What do you, what do you, what do you take will to be? I'm asking him the questions right now. He's under the gun yeah. here. I told you. I told you it's um, what he desires. What is it? Are you, you know asking it? me which things does he desire? I think I just asked that. Well, there's there's an infinity of them. So why don't you ask me, does God desire X? And I will tell you. No, you delineate what they are. How do you have knowledge? I'm not going to just list out all uh, the things that he gonna wants. You're going to cop out now? Come on. Is this serious? <laughs> Well, you started it. Replacing. Can I just give you some things? You started it. Can I give you some things right. that he desires? Would you be happy with that? He anything to us here. Okay, he just has an infinite set of desires, and you don't know what they are. Do you know any particulars that they are? You're saying, tell me, tell me the things that he desires. And I don't want to just kind of you know, go down the line. And you know, uh, Do you know any of them? Yeah. Okay, which ones do you know? God, God desired to create the universe. Great. Okay, what else? I mean, how long are we going to play this game? You understand That's that maybe only I'm one. Winter? How long? It's only been one. But you understand that I see a pattern of you just saying what else, and I don't want to do that all night. Uh, give me the next uh, four. Can you explain the relevance? I don't give understand. Me the next four. I asked you if you have a systematic theology. You like. Yeah, I can explain this stuff. I go, good. Okay. I said, ask me a specific question. I'll ask you. I just did. Do you have another four attributes? Or another, I do. Uh, four, four I do. Desires? All right. <clears throat> um, God desired to let me know that the Christian Bible is false. God desires to let me know that gay marriage is permissible. God desires to let me know that evolution is true and that he created the universe. There's four. Um, what other brain busters do you have? <laughs> Well, you rattle them off so quickly, I couldn't write them down. Um, they're in, they're yeah. in untitled.txt. Why don't you refer to the scriptures? Okay. So, uh, uh, well, <clears throat> I think it's funny because when I was pressing you on the question of uh, what sin was, and I asked against what or against his will, I'm not seeing where sin is coming up here. So you're saying people that uh, don't, uh, or that, uh, um, disagree with you on gay marriage um are are sinning yeah okay so the people who affirm that are not sinning correct um but you believe everyone how is any of this relevant I'm, I'm asking pointed questions here and he said everyone's condemned to hell he's just this, grasping uh... yeah any all sinners are fucked grasping what on, on what basis are they that one thing because there's other people that are yeah, gay anything so well, on what things if you if you um think if you believe what? that gay okay. marriage is not permissible, what? you go you go to hell. Here, write it down. What universal law condemns everyone to hell? What? They they don't there doesn't have to be one. There's multiple. If you think that Christi the Christian Bible is true, so, you're going to hell. If you think evolution is false, you're going to which, hell. 
well, that's only a finite number of, uh, of people. I want to know how you get universal condemnation out of this. So Why do you be, think I need universal condemnation? You just admitted it, right? What are you talking about? Wait, do you even realize what you said like 10 seconds ago? Because you go, you just like totally oblivious. You just asserted such. And you go, well, when did I say this? I go, 10 seconds ago, you just asserted it. So I'm asserted, questioning you on it. I asserted what? Universal condemnation. For what sin? No, I said there's no redemption for people who sin. I just, I, I didn't ask about redemption. I said condemnation. On what grounds are they universally condemned? They're not all people are condemned. You have to break one of these. I don't know that there's any of Wait, God oh, has now, not revealed to not, me. Now not all people are condemned. Okay, you're changing your. All right, um, whatever. I can't. Yeah, I can't I shoot a moving target. So um, <laughs> you're the one moving all it out. Maybe I misunderstood your question. That's possible, right? No, because originally you ran off with it. You said everyone theology, right? Or no? What? You broke up. You said everyone's condemned under your theology. They're all lawbreakers. Again, I didn't say that. And if I did, there was a misunderstanding. Okay, because you're questioning me on why can't he send everyone to hell? Yeah. For, no, uh, there's no uh, redemption uh, story. There's a difference between there's, everybody there's, there's, sins and if you sin, there's no there's, there's no way to man's yep. problem. There's no solution to man's problem in your exactly. worldview. Yeah, God's just sending sinners to hell. For what sins? Just those ones. Those are the yeah, other ones. Are, well, Any other ones? Yeah, maybe. Maybe or are those the only ones you like to cherry pick and just say uh, these, but I can't really make up something else on the God spot. is continuing his revelation, his uh, revelation as we go here. So we'll see. Yeah, it seems like he is. Yeah. God may elect uh, yeah. so like, the Bible, to, like the Bible uh, story. Actual debate and discussion. And is that nothing. it? No, because you're trying to, this isn't even parallel to what I'm arguing uh, for. And you're just trying to just go, I just make this up as I go along and, just stumbling over things here and just so the only to problem quick, with this is that it's not Christianity, is that correct? <laughs> no, I did not say that. There's a good, you know, misapprehension of what thinking there. Only for something cogent and something other than just making up on the spot. That's not what anyone does. They actually hold to what they consistently hold to philosophically and just kind of go, I'll just make up on the spot here to this Christian guy and just go just be trollish here and yeah. you still uh, don't understand the dialectic do you understand do you understand that the point is that if your argument is that it's not logically possible for there to be another worldview which accounts for x y and z all i need to do for x, y, and z. you floundered over universal just spoiler. wait a minute the yeah. point is that yeah, all i need all i need to do is come up with any cockamamie religion no, you that could can't. potentially explain it. No, you can't. And Stop interrupting. Oh, you can guess Jesus. all you want. Fuck, all right, I'll let, I'll let you finish. Go ahead, you're Matt. You're not proving your point. Well, I mean, that's for, I guess, the folks to decide here. But you're saying it does. But, I mean, I give you clear parallelism between the ontological training and accounting for universal particulars. I don't know what that means. Ad hoc. Well, you can. There you go. Here's a new. Here's literally. a new revised untitled that txt. So you want to try again on universals particulars, or are you just floundering over that? Yeah, point? feel free to provide an argument for for this. I, I don't understand it. Try premises and a conclusion. Maybe I'll follow it better if you organize your thoughts a little bit. Do you know what a formal argument is? I think God's about to reveal what the rules of modus ponens are in the scripture. A, you know what a transcendental argument is? Uh, why don't you explain it to me? Do, do some study. Matt, could you explain it to us? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, Let's hear it. God, Matt? Hold yeah, on, time out, everyone. Research. Matt, could you, could you explain the transcendental argument to us? You know what a TA is? Anyone study them? I'm yeah, I'm asking. Them. I'm asking you. Could you explain them to us? Of course. We yeah, I did earlier. Are. I did earlier, not rehashing that over again. Go out, Matt. My 
my no, time my saying. time machine is broken. Could would you mind? No, because I'll be giving the same thing if I challenge you on evolution. You're Hey, go, go Matt, you're talking power. to someone else right now. You're not talking to JHC. You're talking to someone else. I'm just asking you, what do you? What's a transcendental argument? JHC didn't know what it was. Totally dropped the ball. He should be ashamed. We're gonna kill him after this discussion is over for such a horrible blunder. But right now, I'm just asking you, what what do you think? Of, what's a transcendental argument? The transcendental proof. It accounts for both induction and deduction. We're talking about the preconditions of intelligibility. It makes our experience intelligible. Therefore, you're going to, at least on those universal and particular grounds, have the ground of all being being both universal and particular. It naturally follows. I'm saying that since the Christian worldview has uh, <clears throat> been revealed and people disagree with it and want to challenge it, then you give me the preconditions for X, Y, and Z. I just brought up the X and Y. Universal particulars, how you get two in the same realm from a Unitarian perspective. He just goes, oh, it just happens. Okay, so okay, JHC you. asked you if you could construct an argument, right? And you, and then he asked you if you knew, like, what a syllogism was, I believe. And your response That's was, well, do you know? That's not a TA. So, hold on. A transcendental argument is a deductive philosophical argument, which takes a manifest Indirect. feature... It's an indirect argument. It's not direct. Is ah. a deductive philosophical argument which takes a manifest feature of experience as granted and articulates which must be the case so that the experience as such is possible. Yeah, is it a deductive it. argument or is it a non-deductive argument? It entails elements of deduction. And it a transcendental it's argument not, not, is a deductive philosophical argument which so, do you know how to do like premises or a conclusion <clears throat> that follows from premises? Yes, I do, sir. Can you provide one of those, please? Thank you. I just said you're not going to find it in like three form, uh, three or two premises and conclusion syllogism. Okay. Like you're Sorry, gonna you're going to do that or you're not going to do that? That's not the form you're going to find it in. Oh, we'll so that's not that a definition. Argument. Read. We'll agree on the we'll agree on the term deduction. Okay. Now read the rest of the definition after that. Um, I'm just reading from Wikipedia. Where, where would you like me to to cherry pick just your version? Right after, from? right. I just said right after the word deduction. Continue. A transcendental argument is a deductive philosophical argument which takes a manifest feature of experience as granted, and articulates which must be the case so that experience as such is possible. Which must be the case. Okay, how's that proven? Through a deductive philosophical argument. So there's an opponent here, right? The there's a world. there's a deductive argument here. Yeah, and it's going to entail an opposition to that thing that there by which is proven, right? Yeah. Can I see the argument that entails an opposition, please? I'm just asking you. if you granted that. Uh, I'm not granting anything until I see the argument. No, I'm just saying, is that entailed there? Here, why don't I Google it and I'll see if I can find an argument for you and we can talk about it. Just ask you to answer the definition. <laughs> hey, Matt, you know how about that? this? It it doesn't have to be two premises in the conclusion. It could be a couple premises in a conclusion. How about that? Uh -huh. If he knows the nature of it right there. It's going to be, de uh, use the term deduction there, but it actually is talking about the preconditions for it. When you're talking about an ultimate transcendental, you can have sub transcendentals, okay? Like, uh, real narrow, you have narrow and broad transcendentals, okay? We're talking about the ultimate transcendental argument here. The transcendental of all transcendentals, okay? So if it's the ultimate one, then it's going to be accounting for deduction itself. All right. You have an argument. <laughs> a deductive, a deductive argument. argument that accounts for deduction. Yes. It said what did it say? It said it takes... Yes. And by interesting, I actually mean fucking retarded. But go ahead. No, it was talking about the preconditions of them. That's why I kind of disagree with it. There, at least the definition was thrown out. 
it entails elements of deduction on it because it's an indirect argument. That's why I asked you, you got one asserting the worldview or the um, uh, thing that needs to be proven via a certain conceptual scheme over against an opposing conceptual scheme that then is disproven and then validates the transcendental argument that was originally asserted. That's why I asked you, do you understand that there's an op opposition here? Uh, there's, a, there's a bivalence there. Do you understand that? That's why I just said, do you understand what that definition is saying to you? And I just mm -hmm. asked for a yes or no. No, I don't. Pardon? No. Then how's it proven? I, no, I'm, say, I, I'm saying I don't understand. I'm saying I'm totally lost. You're right, though. I don't know. I don't can't provide the subtrain sentinels. So you don't understand what that definition is saying? Uh, yeah, almost positively not. Okay. So why should I get into this with you if that definition is not making sense to you, even the most simplistic of terms? I'm not sure if I'm going to be speaking past you on everything else here. I'm cautious here. Um, I just, I mean, I'd love to see the deductive argument. Now you're used to talking past everyone. I mean, you're usually like a step above everyone. So if you can just tone it down okay. to like, just like a little bit lower for all of us, especially JHC, it would help us understand your view a lot more. Well, I think you know, Joe. You've no, I don't. I, no, I'm really? not going to be able to. I'm not gonna be able never? To. Mr. I mean, you run into Dawkins deity or anything like that? You know, you never debated these people, really? You're telling me? No, no. well, well, the thing is, I've heard them attempt to say things and try mm -hmm. to say that they've given arguments, but I actually either haven't heard arguments when they say that they've given arguments, or I've just heard crap. But could you, could you redeem all of the presuppers now and give it to us because I want to hear what JHC has to say about it. A transcendental argument. Got uh, it. In most simplistic terms, if we just want to put it uh, outside the definition there, but what it represents, we're saying for X to be the case. Or actually, can someone post the um, definition or uh, if JHC can post the definition in the chat? So just, uh, of what? See it verbatim what that definition said. Can you post it in the chat? Yeah, definitely. I think we're going to compare this to it so you see what's going on there. <clears throat> what are we doing now? I just want to see the definition. Uh, I don't know if we should put it in a different chat channel or something like that so it stays. Mm -hmm. It's in the main chat. Channel. No, he's saying he wants me. He wants it to go somewhere where it doesn't move around. Yeah, that way I could just refer to it. But <clears throat> are you on mobile? I've look. I don't want to be annoying to you and ask for a deductive argument. If no, I'm just showing you what the nature of a TA is. Oh, so do you well, understand what that definition is saying? Because that's not sense. Could you just explain? I just wanted to see the precise definition he offered. Uh, which takes a manifest feature of experience as granted and articulates what must be the case so that experience such as possible. All right. What we're saying is for X to be the case, Y would have to necessarily be the case. X yeah. is the case. So Y is the case because right. Y is a precondition for X. So the X is what we both take as undoubtable experience or something in our experience that's intelligible. I'm saying for X to be the case, the Christian God must exist. Yeah, right. right. That's the Christian claim. worldview. Yes. So X is the case. So Y is the case because Y is a precondition for X. The because clause there goes down to a reductio of the contrary. Let's assume you assume not Y for sake of argument. Because you're saying, uh, no, Y is not the precondition for X, which we both take as undoubtable in our experience. Okay, say like laws of logic or something like that, uniformity of nature, universals, particulars, anything like that, all right? And we're saying, I'm saying the Christian God is a precondition for it. You go, no, it's not. No, or no, he's not. Okay, we assume not why. We assume your world. Okay, so now you got two sides of the page. One's asserting the necessary of a TA here, the um, nature of a TA. Assume not why. 
and show that it can, leads to not X. That the non-Y position either contradicts itself, makes X unintelligible, or denies the X itself. If that's the case, then you have it's uh, not the case that not Y is true. Double negation, conclusion, Y is the case. We have uh, law of negation. Okay? That's the nature of a TA. Even right. skeptics have used them in, in the past to refute the skeptics. Because a skeptic comes and challenges and go, well, what if it's not this conceptual scheme? Well, let's assume the opposite conceptual scheme. They end up, they end up having to, and in order to even make their claim, they have to um, they, uh, assume that conceptual scheme in order to make their challenge. Therefore, they're ultimately refuted. So, by the impossibility of the contrary, the why is established. That's what the definitions get into. Something that manifests in our experience. Uh, let's see where it went here. The traditional argument is the deductive philosophical argument which takes a manifest feature of experience, the X, and articulates which must be the case, Y, so the experience such is possible. So I'm saying the Christian worldview is necessary for X to be the case. The way I prove it transcendentally is to assume the opposite of what I'm trying to prove. Right. So I'll put in I'll put in this argument, right? It's modus tollens. If the Christian well, God does not exist, then not X. But X. Therefore, the Christian God does exist. Well, that Miller's Tolens is right there in the sub-argument because the statement here, the nature of TA, for X to be the case, Y would have to be the case, X is the case, so Y is the case because Y is a precondition for X. Well, Y is Y a precondition for X? Well, that because there is proved via reductio of the contrary, reductio ad absurdum of the contrary. And then in that sub-argument there, that's Miller's Tolens being right there. <clears throat> Most told is if P then Q not Q, therefore not P. What? Yeah, so let's fill it in. Let's fill in the variables, okay? <clears throat> so we've been talking about X and Y, but let's fill it in. Now we can fill in whatever. We can say logic or morality or induction and, and whatever. Yeah. And those aren't super interesting on their own. What I want to know is what the because here's an interesting proposition. It's something you don't doubt. God does not lies. exist, but the laws of logic exist. Okay? Now, this statement to me right. does not seem like a logical contradiction. What? If um, Proposition one, I have in chat. God does not exist, but the laws of logic exist. That doesn't seem like right. a... Well, it doesn't seem no. like a logical contradiction. About... Now, if I were to say, here's a logical contradiction. The laws of logic do not exist, but the laws of logic exist. That's a contradiction, but the first one isn't. So logically, at least, I don't think that, at least the laws of logic don't depend on God. We can fill this in with anything. God does not exist, but that's induction medical, holds. That's your metaphysical assertion that they don't, depend on, upon God that they just no, no. I'm are. just saying it seems it doesn't seem like a contradiction I didn't say that was a contradiction well if it's not a contradiction then it's logically I possible the worldview the philosophy that you put forward is going to be incapable of accounting for such entities well that's the claim and that would but be interesting if it were they true exist, but if your worldview can't ground them you're utilizing them but you don't have any philosophical answer to them but you want to take it for granted, you assume that X, and I go, and you're saying, it's not the Christian God, it's something else. I go, well, what is it? Well, I don't know. But I'm just that, saying, I mean, what is inconceivable about Proposition 1? That God does not exist, but the laws of logic do exist. It's inconceivable about that. Why is that logically impossible? <clears throat> you're not using a transcendental argument here i don't i'm not interested in a transcendental saying, argument per se you're saying that the non-god or non-christian worldview is the why 
and that the why the non-Christian worldview can account is a precondition for laws of logic. It can ground but, that X, right? You but I'm saying the laws of logic, well, if I say the laws of logic are necessary, it's not possible for them to be no, uh, to non-existent. You're making the laws of logic the why. Not let's the forget. Actual. Let's forget that for a second. Let's just say, like the laws of logic exist. I laid it out. I spelled it out for you. And you're kind of going, oh, let's just dismiss that. But that was the argument that was thrown your way. You the ar all right, all right, fine. Thing. We'll forget this. So let's talk about. Let's talk about oh, the yeah. argument. If God does not exist, if the Christian God does not exist, then not just X. The formula, just using the formula I gave. Because you didn't your, type it out. Your world. Okay, I'll state it again. You want? You have a notepad. All right, go ahead. I'm not going right. to write this in Untitled, though, because that's blasphemy. Just saying. <clears throat> okay. For, just write it down verbatim. I am. So get Hit it. me. For X to be the case, okay. Y would have to be the case. Y would have to be the case. All right. So for X, laws of logic, okay. Well, hold on, hold on. Is, is X the laws of logic here? Just use it, yeah. Just for example, because okay. I'm trying for to show you where you need to be putting logic. the number. To be the case, why would have to be the case? Now, is, yep. there, is there something so, interesting I should just put in for why right now? Like maybe the Christian God? That's my argument. Your okay, why, so your why would would be the non-Christian world. Your particular perspective. Okay. For the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would have to be the case. It would have to not exist. You're saying is your worldview. Okay, that's uh, premise one. Laws of logic. Premise two, I'm assuming, is yeah. just <laughs> the laws <laughs> of logic have to be the case, right? Huh? Premise two is the laws of logic are the case. Is that correct? X is the case. So Y is the case. Okay. Comma. Because. Y is a precondition for X. Uh, I'm not going to put that in my conclusion. Right. It's a statement. That's why I'm saying these aren't premises. It's just it's these are statements here. This is what is it, or, um, this is just the nature of a statements. TA. No, no. Because in order to get into the um, the assuming the opposite, that's where you get into the most Tolan's argument in the reductio. The reductio is via Moe's Tolens, but the transcendental statement here is saying one thing uh, must be transcendental to the other. Yeah, okay. It's so your argument your argument is valid until you asked me to say because. That entails the reductio. That's the point of huh? proving. That's the point of proving. That's why the word because is there. Because... Why is a precondition for X? How we prove that? Assume oh. the opposite of what we're trying to prove. Because modus ponens. Okay. Modus, yeah, modus fine. Tolens. Modus tollens in the reductio. Because no. you have to show that not Y, or the, uh, yeah, the, 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 Look, the negation of what you want to prove, the Y, leads to not X. It undermines X. Um, can't yeah. account for it or entails a philosophical contradiction, which is self-destructive to a worldview. As soon as your worldview entails a contradiction, that's systematic. Everything else implodes because you're held to everything if you want to believe a contradiction. You can believe the moon exists, yeah, I, the moon yeah, does not exist, and the moon is made of green cheese. And it's not made of green cheese. You have to hold consistently to everything, even contradictions so, then. Okay. So this so. argument... Premise one, for the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would have to be the case. The laws of logic are the case. Conclusion, the Christian God would have to be the case. Because so Y is preconditioned for X. You're right. So now, so now, that's a, now that's a formally invalid argument. Are you sure you want me to add that in there? What? You sure you want me to add something into the conclusion that doesn't show up in either of the two premises? We have a formally valid argument now. If I start adding stuff to the conclusion that doesn't show up in the premises, it's not going to be valid anymore. I say add stuff to the conclusion. I said the because is a sub-argument that entails a reductio. Okay. So... Reductio via the, the, the argument that I have, do you like it or do you not like it? Well, state is exactly stated it here. 
for X to be the case, Y would have to be the case. X is the case, so Y is the case, because Y is a precondition for X. Proven that because Y is a precondition for X is proven by a reductio of the contrary. Be a reductio ad absurdum, assume not Y, assume the opposite of what you're trying to prove. And you show that the contrary is impossible. It actually undermines the X that both took for granted and as valid and undoubtable to start with. All right, so the interesting part is... The worldview undermines that X, which they took for granted, what? and actually makes it irrational. Then, yeah. <clears throat> um, right. then, Hold on a second. So the interesting part is, why would somebody believe that the proposition for the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would have to be the case? Why would I starting, accept that? That's a starting statement. Yeah, I know that. I was just wanted that's the that's the interesting part. Nobody's going to den deny that the laws of logic are the case. So all I want to know is why would somebody believe premise one? Because I'm saying they're grounded in the Christian worldview. You're saying I know not. that's what you're saying. Why would I believe it? I'm, it well, it reflects the, uh, the what you're going to assert too. You're going to say not why is the case. I assert why. You say not why. Right. Why would I accept? That premise one is true. I'm um, just where that's the starting um, assertion. That's I mean that's yours. Yeah. Why would I accept this as an argument if I deny well, the first premise? Any why? But that once again, it can be flipped over to you too to say, okay, for X to be the case, Y must be the case. The non-Christian worldview. Just put Y in there for Christian God. Uh, I don't Christian think worldview, laws of logic. Worldview. I don't think the laws of logic are incompatible with the Christian worldview. I would never make an argument like this. All I want to know is, look, you have a formally valid okay, argument. The only, yeah. And I want to know why, in the, for this formally valid argument, I would accept that premise one is true. Premise one, I've just filled in for the X, for the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would have to be the Yeah, case. you're just using a strict syllogism here, trying to put this in. This st starting point here is a statement. Two I know. Statements. I'm two, reading. I know it's a statement. Two, I want to know yeah. why I would think it's true. I, once again, that's why I told you that TA takes upon a different form of what you're used to and just you're, you know, want to syllogize everything. Does it right? have premises that you think are true? For, for X to be the case, Y would have to be the case. We're talking right. about transcendental necessity here. So why would I think that this saying, is true? We're saying in order for X to be the case, Y must necessarily be the case. Whatever Y is, that follows. I mean, this is there. It's, because we state that Y is a precondition for X. We're saying for X to be the case, we want to say both sides take this for granted. It's undoubtable. We both don't doubt it. This is something we can argue about. No, we can I argue do about doubt a precondition it. for it. You, the laws of logic exist? No, that the laws of logic have preconditions. We're just talking about the... Yeah, they don't. They just, they're just eternal. Yeah, they're but necessary. That, Eternal concepts? They're necessary existence. Which are grounded yes. in what? Why, why would something that's necessary need to be grounded? We're, we're talking about, they just, think, they just exist on their own. These universal concepts apart from my mind. Yeah, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that you view? Have concepts outside of a mind? Really? Well, I'm saying that they're laws. Uh, that assumes regularity, uniform. To begin yeah, with. they're necessary. No, you it's just not... asserted they're they're just uniform. You can say they're necessary, but they're totally disjuncted from each other anyway. The way it makes them a law. What's what's wrong with that view? They're consistent. No, you just skip a step. You just assume uniformity in law-like fashion. Maybe they're not laws. Okay, so so yeah. as part of your argument for the law, why I need to believe premise one for the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would have to be the case. You, we need a sub argument. One, the laws of logic are necessarily concepts. Okay. That's a, that's why would I? Okay. You, by what so you why would I accept that? that? So why would I say that? Why would I say that the laws of logic have to be held in a mind? How do you have concepts out apart from the line? I'm not saying they're concepts. I'm just asking the question. What does it mean to have a concept outside of a mind? I mean, what does it mean for there to be a tree that exists independently of a mind? I mean, it just, it that's just, just does. Physical, that's just a physical thing, but you just introduced naming it. That requires a mind. 
No, these laws of logic, right? Said a tree exists. That's a statement of truth. Can you hand me a cup of statement of truth? No. You just went to a concept and said, oh, I can just have this tree there. You just, you can't escape it because you're a mind, okay? And the, the thing you just no, derived just, from calling that it. is a concept, calling it a tree. You missed it. You're citing the law of identity to begin right. with. A tree is a tree. No, all right. You missed it. So the about question the nature was, of the law of logic. The question it is, is dependent upon the tree. All right, go ahead. For its validity, the law of identity. <clears throat> is it contingent upon the tree? If you take the tree and you know destroy it, does the law of logic still exist? Law of identity? That a thing is what it is? All right, can I ask a question? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. All right. <clears throat> is it logically possible for the laws of logic to exist? But God does not exist. No. And if not, why is that logically impossible? Because of the TA, which we're trying to get into here, is you're going, no. this, this first thing just doesn't show me here. I go, you're not getting down to the reductio and just ignoring the reductio. And that's the crocs. And you're all over the place. So if this, no, if, it possible, if it is possible, if it is possible for the laws of morning. logic, no, look, the TA says all it shows is that God exists because the laws of logic exist. No, okay? we say because. Yeah, that's premise one. Premise because. one is for the laws of logic to be the case. The Christian God would have to be the case. Now, if that's true, Tricidally, yeah. then, then it should be logically impossible for the laws to exist without the Christian God. And I'm that's simply exactly saying, right. and I'm simply saying, why would anybody accept that? No, there's people that deny what we assert. Oh, okay. They're on the opposite end of well, the then argument. We're, then we're the, the then you're thus position. defeated. What? There's so you're two saying sides it is coming together here in an arc, two sides of the page. Christ. Which one can make sense out of the X? If you're saying your worldview is the Y, the non-Christian worldview, then you have to defend it to Look, the hilt. I just want to know why the laws of logic depend on the Christian God. In a logically necessary way. Via the impossibility of the contrary. Yeah, that's just claiming that it's impossible. I want to know this why it's TA. impossible. No, just you said, can't just it say through. it's impossible because of ATA. I want to know why you say it's impossible. It's via easy for me. Look, look, via, via, this is going to be so easy. If via, I want to say, look, here's a TA right here. Um, for the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would have to not exist, right? And I can go through the same thing. And if you say, well, why would I accept that premise? Show and I say, me, and I say me, because of the TA, right? Show, show you me understand that, that that's nonsense. That, I want to know me, why. Show me, show me that not why, according to your TA, can account for the X. I don't need to show that it can that account for it. That's what you, you need to show, show me that it's impossible for logic to exist you without to the show Christian that God. Your, that, that which is contrary to you is impossible. That's look, what the reductio is for, and you're ignoring it. Look, We're this is incredibly easy. Just, get, just take a breath for a second. I just said you can take listen the other to side the, side of the here. You can take the other side, but you got to prove it via the reductio. This is going to take two seconds. Please stop interrupting. Um, you're speaking. Uh, you can, you enough. can correct me. You can correct me when I've I'm been done. Trying to. Five no, you're doing it in the middle of when I'm speaking. Let me finish. Right. Did I'm going to summarize this up. for you. I'm going to summarize this for you, and if you listen, by the Make grace of untitled.txt, may you understand, okay? Now, you have this argument that there is some interesting way, in so far undiscovered way, in which the laws of logic can only exist if the Christian God in specific exists. And you say the reason for that is because the logical impossibility of the contrary. Now, of course, that would be interesting if it were true. If it were true, the statement, um, the Christian God does not exist, but the laws of logic do exist, would be a logical contradiction on par with 
The laws of logic both exist and they don't exist at the same time. Now, I certainly doesn't look that way to me. What I'm asking is for a demonstration. A demonstration cannot be the statement because of the TA. And I've explained why that is. I can do it again now. I can construct a TA that says for the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would not exist. The laws of logic are the case. Therefore, the Christian God does not exist. So you can't simply say, because of the TA, I want to know why I would accept All you did. the premise that I'm not done. I want to know why I would accept that this statement, the Christian God does not exist, but the laws of logic do exist, is a logical contradiction. And again, the answer can't be because of the TA. I, That's as clear as it can get. That's not what I said. It shows you weren't listening. Clearly. No, that's what no. I need for your argument to work. That's not what I laid out. I said, because entails a reductio. That because... No, it doesn't, well, by the way. I'm it doesn't you, imply a reductio, just for the that record. That is exactly... What? And when you read that definition again. If I say I'm going to the grocery store because I'm hungry, that entails a reductio? The clause what are you talking the, about? The clause in the argument, in the philosophical argument, not in your normal nomenclature here that you're just going to reduce it down to. We're talking about the philosophical language of it. When people lay out their TA for whatever they want to prove transcendentally, this because clause involves just draw a little arrow down to a different section and say proved via reductio of the contrary it's a sub argument it's there to say to have the conclusion y is a precondition for x because y is a precondition for x how do we prove that via reductio of the contrary good so assume, that's what assume, i want assume, you never spelled out assume not y did you no you skipped that step then so um not x be a reductio. The X that they affirm leads to not X. Why would I accept that it's true? You don't understand. You're simply saying because of, you're just you saying because the of the reductio. That's that's nonsense. There's no content there. I'm not going to. It's, it's a modus tollens argument. Look, the moon is made of cheese because it's, of the reductio. It's modus tollens here. Let me spell it out for you here. Yeah, I, I would like for not, you to provide a formal a, argument. Not A, and you say not A is, is going to, uh, B is going to, or let's just use, uh, instead of X and Y, use A and B. God okay. is transgender because a of is, the TA. Is, is the world, or I, A is the worldview, and then you say, it's not Christianity. Okay, not A. Why do you keep not explaining a, to this? I understand what not, it is. I want to know why a, I should B, accept it. B, this is logical deduction right here, which you're disputing. This is modus tollens. It's modus tollens. No, it's modus tollens on premise two and three here. You say not a non-Christian worldview, and that leads to uh, it leads to B, you know, which is precondition or the intelligible experience. But premise three reductio shows not B. You actually undermine what you affirm. Laws of logic. As your worldview yeah, under that's the claim. Uh, that's the claim. Why reductio. would I accept that? Why would I accept? Why would I accept that? Not accepting the a Christian reductio God. Ad absurdum? Yeah, you that, rejected a, a reductio ad absurdum. That's what you're saying, but I haven't. You, you haven't demonstrated it. Uh, this is. I'm just laying out the nature of what a TA is, so you understand what the heck it is. I understand what the nature of a TA is. Then, I want to know why I would accept that you, there's a connection you, between the Christian you, God and the laws of logic. Are you, are you disputing that it's not valid? Or are you saying that it's not a valid form of argumentation? Your, your argument isn't valid, but you can construct a TA that's valid. This is a valid TA. Your argument has things that show up in the conclusions, words that show up in the conclusion that don't appear in the premises. You're, you're, right, you're trying to write out like Aristotelian. Stop. <laughs> That's right. just called formal but, logic. You but, wait. Is it your belief? A, is it all... your belief that you can have entire phrases that show up in a conclusion that don't even appear in premises? Okay. How do you prove deductibility? How do you prove it? Prove it transcendentally. I'm literally without words right now. Prove deduction. 
prove it. Can you prove it? Or is it just merely assertion? Can you prove it to me? Transcendentally. As soon as you go, oh, I can, you're going to follow the exact formula. Prove deduction for me. You're making this the hilt, the grand all be all. I go, let's assume not deduction then. How will you prove me right. wrong? So you, don't you have a, wrong? so you don't have a formal, How would you, you don't have a valid argument. You have an invalid argument. For the existence of God. Valid. No. The no, transcendental, not, the transcendental invalid I'm argument telling, for the existence I'm of God. I'm telling you, you're, you won't even answer my question. Prove me, prove deduction to me. Prove what? What are you asking? I'm asking for proof. Proof of what? Proof of deduction. What are you ask? I don't understand what you're asking. You want the definition of deduction? Is this the standard by which everything's judged? How do I know this is the, the way? Look, it just sounds like you is, you don't have any is idea what you're doing. Is the precondition for everything? You're just now what you're is, just flailing at anything. What is I don't even know what you're talking about. So are you giving up on your argument and now you want me to prove J whatever J prove J deduction J means? J Can you prove deduction to me? I mean, well, let's just are, say are I don't have a proof. Hand. Let's say I don't have a proof handy. So what? Can you? Did is you hear no? the words I is just that, said? Yeah, is that a no? I said, let's just say that I can't. You can so say what? yes or no. It's, you don't have to be scared. You're putting this as, as the requirement here. I go, you know what? Just to illustrate the point, you have to prove it transcendentally to me. All right. So you the, definition, do it. the definition of a transcendental myth. argument is a deductive philosophical Without argument. Uh -huh. Okay. That's the definition of a transcendental I gave argument. You one. I just gave now you I'm one. asking you for a, a deductive Listen. argument. And you're I'm, asking me for, and you're your saying, here's, a in, here's an you're, invalid argument. Really no, it's not. It's valid. I just and when I point it out, you're mad yet. that I'm pointing out that you have an invalid argument. And it's you're saying, valid. oh, yeah, well, prove why I need it to be deductive in the first place. I'm you just can't, saying, can you? This, I can say whatever I want, and it's all okay true. because you can't prove deduction. Look, if you don't have an argument they, for the existence they, of God, it's fine. They see, you have to be a kid here. Look, I'm saying. The reductio entails modus tollens, which you All accept. Right. Okay. You accept. You yeah, accept you're right. It, right. You got me. The reductio, the reductio, and the TA proves God's existence somehow. I just have to work it you're out. You're not just getting it. Yeah. You're, you're right. Not getting it. I just have to. I'll get it. I'll just keep repeating it to myself. No, just, no, just write it down. Okay. Here we go. The reductio entails the TA. That's what? premise I didn't one. Even said that word. Premise two, God said, exists. The reductio is go. entailed in the TA. Oh, okay. It's a reductio. part of it because I just, I'll say the statement again. Let's see if you can write it down correctly. Time. For X to be the case, Y would have to be the case. X is the case, so yeah, Y is the That's what case. you're saying, and I'm saying I'm, I'm rejecting God, premise I've one. I wasn't even finished. Now, we don't second, need you to. The, we don't need you to say the rest of it because I'm rejecting second, premise one. You understand? Second, it doesn't matter statement, if premise one is false. Then you don't need to. Any keep why? You're proving the why. You're trying to prove it via this statement. You're saying, okay, for X to be the case, Y would have to be. Okay, how do you prove that statement? We say X is the case, Y is the case, comma, because Y is a precondition for X. That because as is a sub argument there entailed in the TA via a reductio ad absurdum of the contrary to show that the contrary is impossible, which validates that last statement there because Y is a precondition for the X. It's proven transcendentally by the impossibility of the contrary. How do you show the contrary is impossible? You have to reduce it. You have to reductio it. And as via modus tollens, assume the opposite, assume not Y. Show that. You got to do it via the reductio. We can just get into the nitty gritty here, but I'm just overlaying the uh, the overarching argument here. This is what it entails. We can get down to the reductios on multifaceted worldviews, okay? On non Christian worldviews. I'm just not showing that yet. I'm saying this is just the overlay of the argument. And it shows that that opposing worldview, the not why, negates the X they started with. Yeah, I'm not confused about what these are. Why do you keep. I don't care. And what is the connection that, between the Christian that, God and the laws of logic for the not, not why, Because we're saying how we prove our worldview transcendentally against opposition. 
This is how you do it, transcendentally. How do you, like, if you want to say... Is there somebody else take, who can try to weasel the argument out of him, please? Take, what are you not getting? I don't know. Is this, like, some kind of, like, hidden, I gotta be level 37 goofball before you'll unveil the secrets to me? Uh, I've been on here for hours on end, dude. And you just want to dive into trollish attitude? All right, I, hold on, hold on a second, you. you guys. Okay, so let's I've let's recapitulate. Nothing. Let's let's look at all the good that's come out of this discussion. You guys have both agreed that arguments are things, and where everything fell apart is JHC's not sure that you're really giving an argument for the claim that you're making. There was then you guys should debate the professional philosophers that engage in them, even secular ones. They engage in the same thing. You just don't so like don't our this. starting point, or you know, claiming uh, the Christian worldview is the why. But hey, this is how the secular philosophers refute the skeptic, just on secular ground. They say you got to have this certain conceptual scheme. Uh, you know, this, well, why? This appeal well, is pathetic, Matt. Matt. So, so, so I you know, know that you guys got to do some reading. We're very excited to jump on the relevant thing that you're you're saying. Just, I just want to focus us again. Focus. Let's focus. Come on, Matt. Come on, Matt. I, Let's do this. No, You're a uh, Puma, Matt, but you can do this. All right? JHC, what is your initial concern? I understand that he thinks that if the Christian God doesn't exist, then the laws of logic don't exist because the Christian God is a precondition for the laws of logic. I didn't get logic. to that yet. I was just showing you the over... This, you said you wanted. I don't care about out. any of this. I want to know what the connection now between. Now you want to get into reductio. Is that what you want to get into? That's your crap. Matt, Matt, he wants. To, he's asking for a connection. Do you understand what connection he's asking for? No. Okay, so JHC, could you repeat the connection you're interested in? And Matt, I want you to play this game. It's called "Don't say anything until the other person's done talking." Shut up, Joe. I understand that your argument, like any transcendental argument is that um, the laws of logic have certain preconditions, and you believe that one of them is the Christian God, such that if the Christian God does not exist, then the laws of logic can't exist. However, we know the laws of logic exist, so the Christian God must have to exist. I understand this. I don't accept premise one that for the laws of logic to exist, the Christian God would have to exist. Okay. And you yeah. say it's because of the reductio. Great, great. Tell me what that connection is and tell me why it's logically impossible for me to have laws of logic if God does not exist. If the contrary worldview is reduced to absurdity, it can't be. It can't be the precondition. Yeah, that's what you're I understand that's what you're saying. I want to know why. Because if you only got two, you got the principle of bivalence here. If the thing is negation, bivalence, just prove one, you prove the other. How, how's this like going past? Okay. What's, 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 the, what's the issue? I want to know why I would accept that the laws of logic can only exist if God exists. You're saying there's no precondition for it, so you're just ignoring. I'm not Monty saying there's block. no pre. I'm not saying there's no precondition. Okay, I don't so know if there are. Forward, I want right? you to prove that the laws of logic have as one of their preconditions that the Christian God exists. That's my argument. I just laid it out for you. But you're going. I don't know about this whole precondition thing. Well, either you're just saying they're right. axiomatic. Joe, you're good. the Matt Yester. You're the Matt Yester whisper. Try to fish it out of him. I'm not sure what you're disputing. The first premise. You're saying I don't like that. There's a pre there. There have to be a precondition for the X, and just say, well, why not just X and just X is? Okay, you accept that form of argument. No, and just you're still not getting it. I can just say, Christian you God still don't get it. Exist. So, is there a precondition to laws of logic? I want to know why you think it has to be that the Christian God is one of them. I'm showing. Well, how you're not I showing that? it. I have to prove the impossibility of the right contrary. There, to that question, man, that's it right I, there. I just had, I just answered it. This is the argument. What? What's the argument? Let me go over it again. You're missing it completely. You're no, just stumbling around. Again. Sorry, uh, someone just stole my car. I just went and, and killed okay. the person who stole it. I just came thing. back. I just want to hear the argument again. Could you give the you, argument again? Do you disagree 
with this first statement. For X to be the case, Y would have to be the case. In order for one thing to be... I don't know there. what it's respect to. I have no idea what you're talking about. I can't just give you an answer with respect to our... random variables. Are you, like, talking in a vacuum tonight? What have we been talking about? Use any example. Any X. Precondition or uh, uh, intelligible experience. Is there a precondition to intelligible experience or not? Yes uh, or no? For the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would have to be the case. Anything would have to be the case, then. But how are you proving that thing? What are you talking about. <laughs> how do you prove that Y is a precondition for X? It's not mere assertion. It's the argument. Yes, okay? Do you get it to hell? This is just a statement saying one thing must be transcendental to another. Sure. Why does the Christian God have to be that for logic? I'm showing, well, once again, follow Just the repeat it. Yeah, just repeat it for me. Why does the Christian say, God have to be... Because, why is the, the, by, because of the impossibility of the contrary. That's what the argument lays out. Why is it impossible? If why is it impossible reduced, for something else? If you reduced its negation to absurdity. Yeah, if you would do negation, that, if you it, would do that, then that would be interesting. We haven't I'm done anything. A, if I'm only talking to an atheist, oh, I haven't refuted the... The Jew, no. right? Yes, you I You understand? Have. Hold, hold on. Okay. So it's not enough. Are you not kidding? The only thing that you would show by showing that atheism can't account for it is that some kind of theism would be true. You, what you need to do? So you got no, to be a theist. So it's got to be a theist. Okay, fine. God. So the laws of lo for the laws of logic to be the case, God, a God would have to exist. Is that it's what your argument god. is? No, it's not a God. Proving the God. Okay, it's the like Christian God. General, okay. Such a thing as general theism. Period. We have our particular religions. Okay. Okay. So why would I accept that for the laws of logic to be the case, the Christian God would have to exist? I didn't say you had to accept it. If oh you're saying, God. if you're saying you deny the why, the, the what why stands for, you deny the Christian worldview, and you're the challenger to this argument. I didn't say you had to grant that first premise. I'm saying that's my argument to you. You say, no, it's not why. I go, good, you're on the not why side. Reduce the not why to absurdity. That's all. I didn't say you had to grant that. I was just saying, if you take the flip side of the argument, you're going to be arguing transcendental view. You're going to be the why, the not God position. In order to refute me, you have to refute the not why position, which would be me from but your you perspective. You haven't made your argument, though. I just laid out what a TA is that anyone can utilize. You just got to get to the crux there of refuting your op your opposition's worldview. Internally, critique, via reductio ad absurdum. Internal critique, not external critique, internal. It falls on its own weight, period. It can't possibly be true. It can't possibly be pre preconditioned. Therefore, what, you, uh, what the... Um, worldview they were negating is actually validated. Simple. Simple bivalence. Simple disjunct. That's the nature of a TA. Talking about preconditions of what we both take as undoubtable. And we say, my worldview can account for it. You disagree with me and say, my worldview can account for it. Okay, let's see which one can do it. You have to reduce your opponent to absurdity on his can. own grounds on his own grounds look at 